episode 196, Navigating the Business Side of Coaching with Heather Rasband. Welcome to Latter Day Life Coaches, the podcast where each episode is a conversation between me, Heather Rackham, and one of my amazing coach colleagues. Each coach here is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints and a highly trained, experienced life coach making a great impact in the lives of their clients. And together, we have one main goal, helping you live your best life no matter what. You ready for this conversation with the coach? Here we go. In this episode of the podcast, we are joined by the dynamic duo of Heather Rasband and Heather Rackham. Heather Rasband opens up about her transition to helping other coaches in their marketing and sales, offering insights into why this pivot was necessary and how she now supports coaches in building their businesses. This conversation is relevant not only for life coaches, but for anyone looking to grow a business, embrace entrepreneurial challenges, and overcome self-doubt. Please enjoy. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. We are glad to have you here. You get to be joined, or we are joining you, the Heathers. The Heather R's are joining you today. Heather Rackham, that's me, and Heather Rasband. Hey, Heather. How you doing? Good, good. Good. So fun to have you here. Yes, we, um, Heather and I share the same name, same initials. So sometimes if we do anything within the directory where I was like, hmm, <laughs> we have, have to, to make sure. have to make sure we know who we're talking about here. <laughs> anyway, Heather, um, I'm going to have you introduce yourself and then we're going to get started on this conversation today. Okay, perfect. So um, I am a certified life coach. I certified with the Life Coach School back in 2020, so four years ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long. And I have recently switched the focus of my online business to actually helping other life coaches build their businesses. So, and we'll get into that more probably during the podcast. Yeah. But yeah. So awesome. that's, yeah, that's what I do. You know, that is very common, right? It's really, I think it's pretty common for coaches to start and in a particular niche, and then they see things that maybe need a little bit more attention. They discover more of their unique gifts and qualities, and it kind of evolves into other things. So I, yes, and we have to kind of be willing to, to make those shifts. And I think it's kind of hard for I mean, I've done that and I know that it's been hard as I've made those shifts too, because it's a little bit like, ooh, every time feels a little bit like starting over just a little bit. But anyway, I appreciate that you have been willing to kind of go with those nudges and be willing to kind of step out and do something different. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think it's not uncommon. Um, trying to everybody that was in my certification class kind of started off right after they got certified doing one thing. And then mm -hmm. as they coached, it evolved and they have switched niches or switched what they're doing. You know, it's, it's just like you said. So I yeah. don't think so. If you're a coach out there listening and you're feeling the nudge to do something different, it's pretty normal. Yeah. yeah. And most of our listeners are, I mean, I don't know. There's a good majority that are coaches and a lot that are not coaches. So if you're not mm -hmm. a coach, don't worry. This is still going to, will still get to you. Like this applies to you. Don't feel like, oh, I don't need to yes. listen to this one because there are still some great things here that I think you will love to hear. So as you've done that, you've uncovered different needs in the coaching market and you've shifted. Tell us a little bit about why you shifted and, and who you're helping now and what has inspired you to make that change. Okay. So like I said before, I'm a certified life coach. And um, a little while ago, year and a half ago or so, two years ago, I was working for the life coach school where I certified and I was working as a coach. So I was coaching people who were in, in this program and it was a lot of coaches. There were a lot of coaches in the program. So I was coaching coaches. Mm -hmm. And they would come through, many, many of them, and they would just say, I'm so frustrated with my business. I can't get it up and off the ground. The things that I used to do are not working anymore. Or I got into coaching to coach. I didn't get into coaching to market myself. I don't even know what I'm doing. And so it was this common theme. And over and over, and over I would say the majority of coaches 
were struggling trying to build an online business in the background when they got into coaching because they wanted to help people, not realizing all the work that has to go into the back end. Mm -hmm. So when I was working at the, um, at the school, my job was to help them with their mindset, not with their sales. But I have an extensive background in online marketing and sales. I started in about 2016 as a real estate agent, selling things, um, putting up ads and stuff for homes. Mm -hmm. And then I turned into a mommy blogger and did mommy blogging. And that led me to want to become a coach. But all this time since 2016, so what's that? Eight, almost nine years now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have been doing online marketing and I have taken... <laughs> Every class under the sun, I'm certified in all kinds of marketing stuff, email stuff, SEO stuff, um, Facebook stuff, you know, like all of the things. And I'd be sitting there listening to these coaches and I'd be like wanting to get into their business so badly, but it wasn't the job that I was hired to do. Mm -hmm. So eventually um, my employment with the Life Coach School ended. And when it did, I thought, you know, I think I can really help coaches in this other way. And I had a private client um, practice as a coach myself as well. And so I just kind of, I still see a few private clients as a coach, but I switched about a year ago and just started to put my toe in the water of seeing if coaches wanted this and coaches did. Mm -hmm. They're like, yes, please help me with my marketing, help me with my sales funnels, help me with my emails, help me with all of this stuff. And yeah. so I saw a need and I was like, I can help them. I know yeah. what I'm doing. I know what works. I've been doing this for years. So that's why I changed. Yeah. All the things that coaches want to just hand somebody, you know, hand it over to somebody else to do. But when they're starting a business, they can't, they can't afford to, they to pay yeah. somebody else to do it. So what a gift to be able to have somebody help you mm -hmm. do that and figure that out. Okay. So can you expand? What are you specifically offering for them? Yes. Okay. So specifically, let's see, I offer sales and marketing is like the, the umbrella over mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So we would start at the very beginning. There are a lot of programs that'll just do one thing for you. We do the whole thing. So we start at the beginning, we teach you, help you identify who your ideal client is, like who you really want to help and what your niche. So we help them get um, clear on who they're talking to. And then we um, start building a sales funnel that talks to that person, which means we help them start, know what kind of content to post on social media. We do organic things first to get that mm -hmm. up and going. And then we, in the background, we're building like sales pages, their freebies, their email sequences, all of that kind of stuff. So that when they, post on social media and they say, connect with me here, you know, there's somewhere for that client to go. They go mm -hmm. through the funnel. Mm -hmm. And so we help them build all of that out from ads to the time that the client says yes and becomes a client. The coach is on their own once they start coaching or um, implementing the course they've created or whatever it is that they want right. to do. But we build all of that back end stuff. Well, that I was doing just done for you services, building it and I'll talk about that later, but um, we've expanded because like okay. you said, coaches who need our help the most, they can't afford a done for you service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. Like yeah. they're operating from zero dollars if they're, mm -hmm. you know, if they're looking at it strictly from what they're bringing in from clients, it's hard to get up and going. I've had actually a handful of conversations with people recently who are wanting to become coaches. And so they have reached out to me and, you know, I think it's pretty important for people to understand that it, it is not, it, there's two different skills there. There's a coaching skill and then there's the entrepreneurial skill. And most people, like you said, are not really equipped to do that business building side and mm -hmm. nor is it what they want to do. So, right. and, yeah. and it can be, and if you're trying to do it on your own, it's a lot harder than you think it's going to be as well. Oh, well, you just don't have, you have no idea where to start, yeah. what to do. You think you're posting on social media and you're like, why am I not getting any clients? Or you're running this podcast and you've got all these episodes and you're like, why am I not getting any clients? And so there is a method. There is, yeah. we call, there's a secret sauce. I just wrote an email about our secret sauce, but there is a, a way to do it to get clients. But back to what you were saying, that was one of the biggest 
And still, biggest complaints of coaches is they're like, I got into coaching to help people to coach. I didn't know I was going to have to do all this other stuff. And if you look at any other business, I mean, nobody has two full-time jobs, right? right? If you're a dentist, you have your front end people who pick up the phone and schedule the appointments and, you know, take the money. And you have people in the back who the dentist would never, ever, ever think of being a dentist and trying to do all the scheduling and, and stuff. So it's interesting that coaches think they have to do it all by themselves because you can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, or you can, and it's just going to take you forever and you'll be frustrated. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And I think this is one of those things too, how we said, if you're not a coach, this still applies to you. There are so many people growing businesses, right? You know, and you see yes. the influencers on social media everywhere and all these same things still yeah. apply right there. Like yes. I think it's going to be so much easier than it actually is. And it takes a lot of, takes a lot of coaching in as <laughs> you have to coach yourself a lot in, in along the process, but yes. I'm curious, I, and I know this just from my own personal experience, how much quote unquote niche drama there can be for people as they are feeling like they have to really narrow it down and just pick one audience to work with, right? Have you ever worked with someone where you were just immediately like, oh, this is not, this isn't going to work. Like they just need to pick something else. Or do you really think that most things can thrive? This is such an answer that people hate. You don't know until you test it out. So I've seen some really, I don't want to say weird, but specific niche, niches really take off. I, I haven't worked with her personally, but I do know a coach. She is an arm coach. She teaches people how to lift weights and do exercises specifically to sculpt their arms. And she's wildly popular. Who knew, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but there are some niches that are um, kind of tried and true and they are easier to promote and market and their money, anything about money, whether it's budgeting money or making money, anything to do with that. So money is one, time saving and productivity, those, that one is very easy to promote and there's a big audience out there for it. Mm. Uh, the other relationships of any kind with your teenagers, with your toddlers, with your spouse, with your mother-in-law, with, you know, the people you work with. So relationships are a big one. Uh, one that might be surprising is home organization and cleaning. That is a big one too. Uh, and then anything to do with food or weight loss. Mm -hmm. So those are the big ones that are pretty easy to promote. However, they're also, there's more competition out there, but you can find your people who like what you have to say and the way you say things. So those mm -hmm. are the easier ones. But right now we have um, a coach that we're working with and she's a style coach. So she teaches women how to dress their bodies. And her whole message is about dressing the body that you have. Like you don't have to lose 50 pounds to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to feel good in your clothes. Yeah. And she's become wildly successful. So we just never know until you try it out. Right. But there are some niches that will be... <clears throat> very specific and you may be slower at growing or not have as many clients as fast as someone else who's doing something that's more um, like those other ones that I listed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such good points. And so many, there are so many different directions and avenues that somebody could go, which I think does make it hard when somebody's starting to coach, like their life experiences can often lend to many different sorts of niches and it is it can be hard to just kind of figure out how to narrow it down but I love because it like what you were saying like you help people learn how to speak to their audience just like helping them organically when they start like start in that social media organic space and help them learn how to mm -hmm. speak to their audience yeah and when you the more you speak to your audience the clearer your message becomes and the mm -hmm. clearer it becomes to you who you like to work with mm -hmm. what you like to talk about and what you're good at mm -hmm. so yeah, for yeah. sure mm -hmm. so then this kind of begs the question do you work with other entrepreneurs outside of coaching or do you just work with coaches right now i just work with coaches i chose that because i am a coach mm -hmm. and so i speak the coach language i identify with the struggles that coaches have because i've been there done that and i i've Ever since I got certified as a coach, I've really paid attention to what works as far as marketing for coaches. 
but many I toy with the idea maybe of working with personality based clients as well. So that would be people like um, food bloggers or influencers, things like that. Mm -hmm. But right now it's, it's solely focused on coaches because I just, I love coaches. Yeah. But I do think it's true. Like you are able to help so many people through the coaches that then you're helping. Yes. Um, I have a friend and she, she does websites mm -hmm. and she said to, she, she got certified as a coach as well. And then ended up, she just builds websites for coaches. And she said, at first I was kind of, didn't know how I felt about that. Cause I, did I waste my time becoming a coach? And then she's, she, she said, no, you know, I've seen that this is the way I'm helping other coaches get their message out into the mm -hmm. world. And I really internalized that with this too, because we help coaches of any, like all I've worked with physician coaches who help other physicians, this style coach. I've worked with um, coaches who are, I don't want to say bodybuilders, but like who are health coaches, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, food mm -hmm. coaches, relationship coaches. And I can't coach on all of those different things, but I can sure help them get their message out there and help all the people so yeah, it's really fun. Actually, it's really mm -hmm. fun. I love it. And I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that they're, that you're helping with that because I know personally that was the part and it still is the part that I do not like the most about <laughs> business. It's all yeah. of those, all those little things. Okay. So not only do you work with coaches to help them build their businesses, like you said, you also have your own clients, you know, that you, you have, that you have, and you help people in amazing ways. What advice would you give to women of the church who are starting businesses who aren't necessarily coaches, but are struggling with the idea of investing in themselves and making mm -hmm. money? Because that's mm -hmm. a huge one. It, I would say, well, just do it is what came to my mind. Just move forward and do it. First of all, we live in a day, we live in 2024. It wasn't that long ago, just like the 1970s, when a woman couldn't even open a bank account by herself. Mm -hmm. She had to have her husband, her father, or like maybe even an older brother or somebody open a bank account for her. That was not that long ago. So we live in a day and age where women have more rights and privileges that we always should have had, but now and more opportunities. And a lot of things that women are doing now, you can work from home and do it. Like I work from home. So... I'm here when my kids come and go and stuff, and then I work from home. So, I mean, there are so many opportunities for women. Our grandmas and great grandmas suffered and sacrificed and fought for us to have the rights to do this. Don't let them down <laughs> if you want to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my soapboxes is that we just live in a day and age where we have so many opportunities. I think too, that the desires that are put upon our hearts and the talents that we have been given were given to us for a reason. If you feel the push to start a business, it's because it's inside you. You're feeling that push because God gave us talents to share and it's more than just singing and playing the piano. I mean, you know, coaching is a talent. Um, helping whatever business it is that you might want to start is a talent for you to share. And it's been placed upon your heart so that you can help other people. Sometimes the best way to do it is to start a business. Mm -hmm. Have you, I'm assuming you've read the book, Big, Ma Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Have you read that? No, I have not. Okay. Well, there she, what you said is just bring something up to my mind that I read in there, but she talks about, um, you know, things are bigger than us, right? There's the universe, you know, what we see it as heavenly father, heavenly mother, but a lot of people just like, it's the universe, right? That's just kind of working in our favor. And the way she, she described this, you know, the same thing, like we get these urges, we get these nudges to do something. And it's something that wants to come forth into the universe. Mm -hmm. What well, our beliefs is, you know, via Heavenly Father, like He wants those things to come forth, and they are going to come forth regardless. And you get that nudge, and whether you decide to follow it, like it'll be with you for a while. But if you don't act upon it, that nudge will go to somebody else, right? Somebody else yeah. then will be given yes. the opportunity yes. to do that because it's something that needs to come out into the world. And I love looking at that that way. Like I think it helps, it gives me permission to like really listen to those things that come to my mind and then 
decide, do I want to act on this or not? Because this is going to come out in the world regardless. Am I, do I want to be part of it or not? Anyway, I just think that that is just a really, a, a great way to look at it. I love that. I love that perspective. I'll have to read that book. It's a really good book, by the way. <laughs> it's really good. And I um, think, oh, no, go ahead. When, uh, since we're speaking specifically to an LDS audience, mm -hmm. so we're raised very much in a like service base, mm -hmm. service oriented, which is, which is a beautiful thing, beautiful thing to be service oriented, but it can be a real stumbling block for women, especially if they're wanting to start a business because you feel like you shouldn't charge very much for your stuff or that you should give it away for free. And the best way usually to help people is to have them become part of your program or buy your thing because people who really want help, they will make that investment to, to get whatever it is that you have. And then they're committed and they're more willing to take the steps to change or elevate their life or whatever it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Where if you're just giving it away for free all the time or charging five dollars or you know whatever it might be the people you're trying to help are not going to value your services and therefore they are not going to get the transformation and change that they desire either mm -hmm. that is such a good point and something that most people will still struggle with they'll hear you say that and then when it comes right down to it they'll be like ah, but i'll just do it for free or they mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a hard thing in large part, I think, because some people feel like it's selfish to charge money to do something. And I and I think that's something else I just wanted to ask you really quickly here is that, and just like some people do feel like starting a business, taking time away from their family or from other service things is, is being selfish. Why do you think that's a misconception? And how do you think that building a business can be really crucial to us as women? So- if you rewind the society that we lived in from like the 1950s until way, you know, mother was in the home. Mm -hmm. Women didn't work. They didn't do, do things like not very many of mm -hmm. them. So society taught us that and our moms and our grandmas that, and they taught us that. And then pushes from, from the church, whether they meant to or not, a lot of time, there was a lot of talk about get an education just in case you need it, but you don't really need to use it or, you know, things like that, which were based on the societal norms of the time. And so I think that that's why there's a lot of like, unknown maybe about women doing things outside the home where we live. I think I definitely know that the um, message is changing within the church. It's already changed in society, you know, that we can do so many things. And so I think that that's where it probably comes from society and messages that we received earlier on in the church, which are not there so much anymore. And if you look at the doctrine, that's not even really part mm -hmm. of the doctrine. It was just the societal norm of the time. Mm -hmm. And um, even I, so I've, I've been a stay at home mom. It's great. If you can be a stay at home mom and you want to do that, do that. I mean, you know, I'm not judgmental of whatever. I've been a stay at home mom, a full time working mom, a part time working mom, a mom that works from home. I've done it all, you know. But I used to believe when my husband and I were first married that to be a good mom, that was all you had, that was all you did was be a mom. I did. I thought that. My views have since changed. And my favorite saying now is, I can be a mother and. So I can be a mother and a life coach. I can be a mother and an online marketer. I can be a mother and a marathon runner. I can be a mother and whatever it is that you want to do. They're not an either or choice. Yeah, it's the power of and, right? <laughs> there is so much power in embracing that. We it we're, It's not exclusive. There's, there's just not one thing we can do in our life. There are so many things that we can do. Right. And I brought up the mother, but you know, mother, wife, woman, whatever, yeah. whatever role you're fulfilling. And you actually are going to be more fulfilled, happier, have more spark in your life. If you are doing things that fill your bucket and give you a purpose outside of just serving your family. Mm -hmm. 
And and that could be anything, right? Hobbies, it can be work, it can be, it's whatever you choose it to be. I think it is so important for us to, to look and dream and all the, like, I didn't even know how to dream. Somebody asked me once, you know, like, you know, what, what do you dream about? Or what is like your dream vacation? Or the, if you could have anything in the world, what would it be? And my brain had just never even gone there. Like it's a <laughs> skill that we have to learn to even allow ourselves to think about what would I want to do if I wasn't here? You know, if this was, if this wasn't the only thing that I was doing. Another thing that I think would, would be worth talking about that is applicable to anybody who was considering starting a business or doing anything entrepreneurial wise is money, money. And we talked a little bit about that for a minute. Like people think that they should just give their services away for free. It's hard to take money. We have some other deep rooted beliefs about money that I think play a big part in there. Like Money, money's the root of all evil, all those sorts of things. What do you, what do you got to say in rebuttal to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, money, if you read the scripture, it's not money that is actually the root of all evil. It's the love of money. Putting money before God is what is evil. Um, the church couldn't do all of the humanitarian work and the missionary work and build temples and churches if it didn't have money. We live in a world where everything runs on money. Money is just a means of trade. It's not good and it's not bad. It's just a tool. And so we, I think, that yes, like you said, there are some misconceptions. A lot of people have taken that scripture out of context and said that money is the root of all evil, but it's loving your money more than you love God is the root of all evil. And um, money in the hands of good people is an amazing thing. Uh, I don't know. Speaking of a book reference, if you have read, I've got it here, Rachel Rogers, We Should All Be Millionaires. I have not. Oh, Boy, we're both giving some good, we're giving some good things to read today that neither one of us have read. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. It is good. And she talks about, um, there have been studies done that when women have money, ample amounts of money, they do things with money <laughs> that men don't do. Mm. Women contribute to charities, they start scholarship funds, they go to the school and pay off the lunch balances of everybody who can't pay off their lunch balance. They, do you know what I mean? Women are very, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, generous. Generous. Yeah. With their money. And so putting money and earning your own money and helping to support your family or supporting your family on your own, however it looks for you, those are amazing, great things. It's part of why we're here. Mm -hmm. And so money in the hands of all of the good people can do so much good. I yeah. think people forget that. Yep, they do. <laughs> right? I mean, it's so easy in society today to just look and see, yep, all the different and to judge, you know, the, the decisions people make or the things they decide to do. And we just get to like keep our eyes on us and check in with our heavenly parents. And there's so much that each of us can do in this world that is so good. There's so much good to be done. Yes. So much good. Co through coaching yep. <laughs> or building a business of your, I mean, in lots of different avenues. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, Heather, this, um, I think really important messages have been shared today. Things that hold a lot of women back and it doesn't have to, I'm not just, you know, it's not just women, it holds men back too. But I think many of our listeners are women and we get held back by funny things. Women get different messages than yeah. men do. Men yeah. and women get very different messages from society, uh, from church. So that we are dealing kind of with some different things yeah. depending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do. And we need to be watchful of those things. Like I, even just the other day I was, my husband and I were watching something and he said something. And I said, if that was a man, you wouldn't have made that comment about that person. If, you know, if, and he's like, no, I don't think so. I think I would have made that comment, whether it was a man or woman. And I said, I don't think so. You know, like just little <laughs> things. I think we have to we just be vigilant and pay attention to the messaging that we get and point it out, point it out to our daughters, point it out to, so that we don't just internalize them. But I love the work you're doing. I love that you're helping facilitate such goodness, bringing such, you know, helping people to bring their skills and their talents out to the world because it is so needed. 
Thank you. Yes, it, it is actually really, really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to touch on one thing that um, I got distracted but wanted to talk about is this with we are also taught in church about self-reliance. Mm -hmm. And many of us think that whatever it is that we are doing, whether it's raising our family, starting a business, whatever it might be, that we have to do it by ourselves. We have taken the term self-reliance out of context again or to an extreme and think that we need to do everything all by ourselves that was never the way god intended it to be i mean when communities were smaller and people didn't live in bigger houses on bigger you know we were all right next to each other and women would help each other have babies and they'd all get together and quilt together and they would get together and make butter you know and do all of the things and because we are so isolated now that's one of the reasons like depression and anxiety circles so high is because we don't reach out to our community. So the reason I bring this up is because we are talking about building businesses and we just think that we have to do it all on our own. And it becomes such, golly, what would the word be I would use? It was just, it just becomes so hard. Mm -hmm. trying to do everything on your own, especially if it's a skill that you don't naturally have or that you've not been educated in. And so when my clients finally come to me, so many of them will say, I have been trying to build my business. I have one lady, she said, I've been trying to build my business for five years by myself and I'm not making progress. I'm not, you know, once they start working with me or I'm talking about like if you're mothers or whatever and you have somebody come and babysit or have somebody clean your house or whatever it is, take your neighbor up on the offer to, I don't know, whatever. And in business, it's the same thing. You get somebody to help you do something. It's like a weight lifted off your shoulders. And you then are given the mental bandwidth to move forward in where your genius lies. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, that's why we're here. Community is why we're here. Connection is why we're here. Mm -hmm. And, and we were never meant to have all the talents, right? Like we were no. never meant to have right. everything. And so we get to magnify what ours are and then let somebody else magnify what theirs are and then work together in community mm -hmm. and connection and, and, and bring about great things. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. Yeah. All right. Before we go, <laughs> can you tell people where they can connect with you? Yes. So I want to tell them a couple things. I talked about that I just solely did done for you service. I mm -hmm. am just right now in the process. So by the time the podcast comes out, it'll be out and ready of launching a course with a, And so my clients who want to, and I put a few people through beta course. So these are people who want the services that I have, but are not in a financial position to pay for a done for you service. So I'm super excited about that. So we now have three different levels of service in my business. There's the done for you. There's a done with you where we work, collaborate together and we hold your hand and we help you with the tech, but you're still doing quite a bit of the work. Mm -hmm. And then there's a done by you where it's like a self-paced course and with lots of support from us, but you're moving at whatever pace that you want. So mm -hmm. super excited to have all those levels. And now we can serve all the coaches, no matter where you are financially or time-wise. And the best place to find me right now is on Instagram. And it's social ads with an S solutions. Okay. With another S. <laughs> Perfect. I yeah. love it. And I really like the titles that you've given those three different categories. I think they really, I don't know, they just resonated with me. It actually made me think about other ways in my life that, you know, like those three mm. different categories. Like I should look at my life in those three categories in so many different ways. Um, right. So helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, it's perfect. Heather, thank you so much. It was awesome. And thank you to you listeners for being here and we will see you again next time. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey, we just wanted to thank you for spending part of your day here with us at Latter-day Life Coaches and being part of this conversation. Share this with your friends so that you can have a conversation with them on this topic as well. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a good one, my friends.